Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in James chapter 4, going to be starting in verse 1 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we begin this fourth chapter of James, verses 1 through 10 deal with worldly-minded or godly-minded. Now, the greatest wars ever fought are those wars that were fought in our own mind. God's kingdom warring against Satan's kingdom for mastery over our souls. Before salvation, Satan is ruler of a person's soul. It is destined to spend eternity with its rulers in the God's place of eternal judgment. But the Holy Spirit presents the gospel to the unsaved soul. And, and the battle for that soul begins. Satan's kingdom, using its vast knowledge of our sinful nature and our sinful lusts, works tirelessly to keep our minds blinded from the glorious gospel of Christ. The Holy Spirit, through God's kingdom, moves upon the blinded mind to bring in a ray of the gospel light, to reveal the love and the grace and the forgiveness that is available to those who receive this gospel. In the unsaved, if sorry, if the unsaved person chooses to remain in the darkness, then the Holy Spirit will work to bring out another opportunity for them to receive salvation. If they choose the gospel salvation, then Satan will work effortlessly to keep them from being a witness to other people that are under his control, other blind people. Although Satan cannot steal our salvation or cause you to lose your salvation, yet he will use your sins to condemn you and to make you feel guilty and unloved by God. He also has at his disposal unsaved person that you associate with. He also has television radio, computer, books, magazines, all kinds of things to keep you occupied and keep you to condemn your soul. And the Holy Spirit, by prayer and by God's word, is leading and guiding them into all truth. Truth about God's love, truth about God's forgiveness, in the midst of sin and guilt. Truth about being a new, cre a new creature in Christ. Truth about having all the promises of God for you. Truth about an eternal home in heaven with God. Satan's Satan battles in people's minds to be occupied only with what can be seen in the here and now. The Holy Spirit works to get people to consider the unseen world, the world where God resides, the world that is actually more real than our world. It's more real than our world because our world, that which is seen, has come from the unseen world. In this next portion of scripture, in James 
we will look at where all wars and battles originate. All the great wars of this world had their beginning where? In the same place. It's the depraved heart of man. And that's exactly true. All war, you name a war throughout all of history. And it all started in the, in, in man's depraved heart. Now, chapter four and verse one says, where do wars come from and fightings among you? Don't they come from hence? Even from your what? They come from your lusts that war in your members. Now, the Greek word for more means uh, major, it means major worldly conflicts. So he says, from whence comes wars and fightings. Now, fightings here are disagreements, brawls with people around us. So wars deals with major conflicts. Fightings deals with everyday conf uh, conflicts and, and difficulties that we have with people. And then he says, uh, fightings what? Among you. Now, it is possible that James is saying that there was, there was fightings between Jewish believers uh, in the synagogue over such things as Sabbaths, feast days, circumcisions, so on and so forth. So James here is kind of implying that possibly there were disagreements in these Jewish synagogues that he's writing to. The Judaizers were always disputing Paul's teaching of grace by telling the Gentiles to live by the law of Moses. Now the Judaizers were basically Jewish people who would go around, uh, they would follow people like Paul who would plant churches, and they, uh, after Paul or the other apostles would leave a place, they would come in behind and they would say, oh, you got saved, that's nice, but you still have to keep the law. So they would, they would tell uh, believers that that the law was still binding. They were called Judaizers. How much more would it be hard for a Jew to leave behind the law which was given by God to Moses and by which the Jewish nation lived their lives for several thousand years? It would be very tough. It would be very tough for, and James is writing to Jewish believers. So it would be even more tough for a Jewish person to leave behind the law of Moses, which Moses gave to them and which, which has been around for thousands of years, even at this time. So it would be very difficult for them to say, well, you know what? The law is not binding on us concerning salvation, concerning salvation. It was engraved in, the law was engraved in them. It would be hard to change from the law of Moses to the perfect law of liberty in Christ. James seems to be dealing with something that is actually going on. James, James does not say with other people or out in the world, but he says, among you, among you. So James here is, is probably dealing, uh, he knows about situations that's in the Jewish community outside of Jerusalem that's spread abroad, and he wants to deal with it. Where do wars come from? They always come from within. Their origin, listen, the origin of all wars is the lusts, the pleasures of the heart. But these are sinful and selfish pleasures that have one purpose, and that is to satisfy self, regardless of what God thinks. This is where wars come from. It's to, wars come from 
trying to satisfy self uh, apart from God. If people were, listen, if people were satisfied with what they had, then they wouldn't need to war. Heaven is a place of no war. Why? Because we are, we will always be satisfied with God. So all wars begin out of uh, satisfying their a person's sin, persons or people's sinful desires, whether it's fleshly or whether it's mental. They want to satisfy their hatred towards another people group, or they want to satisfy their body by taking over someone's land, which is rich with corn or wheat or whatever, or they want to satisfy their bank accounts. So they, so they wage war against another country to get their gold and their silver. Here on earth, even saved people can become unsatisfied because of the cravings that are coming from their sinful nature. And this is true. You know, when we got saved, our sinful nature didn't say, okay, well, I know I'm not welcome here anymore. I guess I'll just leave. <laughs> no, no, the sinful nature is still in us. And it hates God and it hates his word. And it's going to do everything possible to fight that new nature within you. The lust, your sinful nature is going to continue to crave sinful things. Kings and rulers, they want more land, they want more oil, they want more food, they want better knowledge. People want to control others at home or at work. They want others to conform into their image. When those who are to be conquered, when they resist, then war takes place. War takes place when when uh, those who are being conquered, those who are trying to be, you know, being told what to do, they fight back. Oh, yeah. So he says here in the last part of verse 1, even of your lusts, that war in your what? In your members. In your members. Now, this Greek word for members is melos, and it means a limb or a part of the body. Although the word member in the Bible refers to people in the body of Christ, we often say we're a member of the body of Christ. It does refer to that uh, at times. Yet it also refers to parts of our physical body. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13 and verse 19, chapter 7 and verse 5 and verse 23, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5, James chapter 3 and verse 6, and chapter 4 and verse 1 here, both Paul and James spoke of the struggle that takes place, what? Within man, within man, our body, our sinful flesh, warring against anything that is of God. So he says it, when he says in verse 4, warring against the, that, that war in your members, it, it's not, you're, I know you're probably thinking members of the body of Christ or members of a country. No. It's talking about your physical, your hands, your eyes, your feet, your elbows, your legs. It's talking about physical members here. Wars and fighting start from the sinful lusts and desires that come from within a person. It's our sinful flesh that desires to hate and to judge and to steal, and to lie, and to take what others have, or to tear other people down. It's the sinful nature that resides within the fleshly body. But in the Christian, it is God's new nature 
that wants to build up. It wants to love and to forgive and to encourage and, and to, give to give to others. God's new nature. So inside of every Christian, you have a new nature and an old nature. And they war and they battle for control of that person. It is sad, but every, every war in this world, in this world's history, started from within the sinful desires and the pleasures of only one person and maybe just a few people. You're talking World War I, World War II, you're talking all the, all the wars of the world. You're talking all the wars, usually they start with the sinful desires of one person. That's it. Millions and millions get killed, murdered, because one person, one person wasn't satisfied within their own sinful body. Millions upon millions have been killed, land taken, possessions destroyed, because one person was not satisfied within themselves. They had to feed the craving of their sinful nature. Now, uh, we're going we're to stop here. We're going to start in verse 2 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.